The first step of climate adaptation involves identifying the appropriate technology solutions. Whereas climate mitigation technologies are aimed at reducing and reversing the flow of greenhouse gas emissions via solutions such as renewable energy or carbon capturing systems, climate adaptation solutions focus on safeguarding and sustaining livelihoods and systems in response to the negative impacts of climate change. Examples of climate adaptation measures include adopting drought-resistant agricultural practices and crops, as well as strengthening or building coastal flooding protection with either nature-based solutions like mangrove ecosystems or artificial structures like seawalls. Other adaptation solutions include establishing or strengthening access to information technologies, such as early warning systems and remote satellite sensors to enable timely and adequate response or certain prevention mechanisms. Moreover, Climate change-related risks and hazards, such as the increased frequency and intensity of extreme weather events, may result in the need to develop new technologies into the future. The truth of the matter is that solutions need to be specific to the conditions and needs of the systems and communities where they are applied. So, although in theory, there may be many solutions available, transferring them from one context to another requires close consideration. Now, if, if you're gonna lead by technology, you're barking down the wrong path. You're not going to get the fundable concept. You need to start with the problem. And I would also say that we need to be careful about a technology first driven process because, you know, I've seen technologies, solar technologies that capture water and purify it for drinking. I've seen technologies that make rainfall air conditioning units and you know all of these technologies can be more cost effectively that the services that these technologies provide can be more cost effectively provided by trees nature which is more affordable which is more cost effective which won't shut people out so please cautious Caution about leading with the technology. Diagnose the problem first and then find the technology in the loosest sense of the word that fits the problem, that is a local solution that can be paid for and maintained by local communities. To inform this process, the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change recommends that countries conduct technology needs assessments to identify and integrate locally specific technology solutions into nationally appropriate mitigation actions, national adaptation plans, and other adaptation planning documents which complement national development objectives. The key steps to these statements include 1. Identifying priorities and strategic sectors. 2. Prioritizing technology within the sectors. 3. Identifying barriers. 4. Formulating an action plan. And 5. Developing project ideas for each prioritized sector some of which may be suitable for GCF financing. Without a technology needs assessment, countries may have difficulty determining the level and scope of support required to meet national development and climate resilience priorities, as well as other targets, such as sustainable development goals. Research that you have to do. Um, and once you've got that skeleton, then that's what you should take to the country level for um, further consultation. And so it is an organic process, but the starting point should be a national strategy on adaptation and the priority in that. To bridge this gap, the Climate Technology Centre and Network, the operational arm of the UNFCCC, which focuses on technology, is mandated to assist countries in the process of identifying and integrating climate technology solutions into plans, policies, and projects. CTCN collaborates with a variety of public and private financial institutions to help deploy climate technology solutions in developing countries. The network also assists a variety of stakeholders during the development of project proposals for the Green Climate Fund and other climate financiers, such as the Global Environmental Fund and the Adaptation Fund. The UNFCCC finds technology transfer as the set of processes covering the flows of know-how, experience, and equipment for mitigating and adapting to climate change amongst different stakeholders. Since 1992, the UNFCCC process has set out to promote and support collaboration for the development and transfer of climate technology solutions. It includes specific provisions on the use of climate technologies and takes all feasible steps to promote, facilitate, and finance their transfer to other parties, 
particularly developing countries. Attention to the development and transfer of adaptation technologies is on the rise, and recent climate conferences, such as the COP26 in Glasgow, are looking to set global standards and policies towards 2030. These efforts are also expected to support economic recovery and job creation. In Asia and the Pacific, Japan has played an important role in promoting and supporting the transfer of climate change technologies. The, uh, our partner country have a lot of options and the, uh, they can reach to uh, JICA uh, to work with the, our plan, uh, utilizing our plan, uh, like a loan project or grant project or technical cooperation project. Or the one of the options is the uh, approaching to GCF. So, so the first uh, thing is uh, to uh, let them prioritize the adaptation or mitigation uh, project in the uh, uh, the long list of their uh, developing project. So that is uh, necessary, and the uh, we can do is the uh, through the dialogue with the partner countries. Uh, we clearly share the JICAD's will to uh, support and work for this. Uh, climate change and the uh, actually we JICA uh, prepare the country strategy uh, policy so in that policy paper uh, uh, we clearly state uh, climate change on the priority and the share it with the partner country that is the uh, I think first step and the necessary step the, uh, we get the actual uh, data from the field like uh, uh, when we explain the climate rational requested to uh, share the back data but uh, some of the parties the lacking uh, like uh, uh, actually we can get the current information and, and the also a future anticipation form but uh, most of the case the long-term uh, pattern change data is not prepared or the recorded so for that part uh, we need to uh, prepare for that question or the comment from this chair and the when uh, when we don't have the uh, enough data so that that is the uh, one of the uh, challenging part and also uh, uh, necessary for smooth approval process so scaling up is we are very much share the importance and the our uh, new project and the approved project one key, uh, the first approved one is the Timor Leste forestry project and they actually we JICA worked in uh, the country more nearly 15 years and the formulation of the master plan and also uh, like a forest conservation model involvement of the with involvement of the local stakeholders so in the uh, utilizing this year uh, plan and uh, to scaling up to other uh, region. So that is the uh, the case uh, we are uh, focusing on. And the, actually, but uh, that project is more on the uh, mitigation project. And the uh, adaptation technology, that is uh, quite a lot we have. Uh, and the, at this moment, we don't have the very specific project, but uh, uh, most of the country, I, I think, uh, need the uh, adaptation technology related to uh, correcting data and related uh, to uh, weather forecast or the specific weather pattern change. So, and the actually that sort of information, uh, uh, lacking of information, uh, caused the difficulty for uh, formulating required level of GCF. Technology innovation is crucial to reaching the goals of the Paris Agreement, and it must happen where the demand for it is greatest, much of which lies in developing nations, where vulnerability to the negative impacts of climate change is higher. Much of the financial flow, as well as the ecosystem that supports it, is well established in developing countries, as well as in some of the world's largest emerging economies. Unlocking climate technology innovation in developing nations is at the core of GCF investment decisions, which aim to accelerate and scale climate action. However, there are numerous obstacles in the way of inclusive and responsible adaptation technology innovation. In poorer countries, some of these obstacles stem from higher perceived risks and limited access to finance. The GCF acknowledges these factors when making its investment decisions. The GCF seeks to support climate action projects or programs that maximize mitigation, adaptation, and development. 
Thus, it is important to articulate how a project or program will create a conducive environment for capacity building activities which support the goals of policymakers and local actors. The GCF's investment decisions aim to unlock private finance for climate solutions by helping establish a track record of scalable climate technology solutions. In its effort to strengthen the entrepreneurial and innovation ecosystem by acting as a market incubator, the GCF favors project proposals which are supported by technological assessments or analyses. Since the traditional model of digital startup incubators and accelerators in high-income countries has limitations for climate technology development in low-income countries, the GCF is looking into new incubation and acceleration models to expand the pool of climate innovators and entrepreneurs in developing markets.